Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day, and it's a beautiful one that mixes integrals with infinite series, which is perfect timing since my Calc 2 class is studying series right now. And I was actually chatting with my colleague and math bestie, Dr. Sanjay Gupta, about this problem earlier, and we both agreed it's such a lovely little integral, so I hope you all enjoy it. We have definite integral from 0 to 1 of the natural log of 1 plus x over x dx. And the hint that I already gave pretty much was that we need to use infinite series in order to evaluate this integral. So you'll need to recall that for x, absolute value of x less than or equal to 1, we can represent natural log of 1 plus x as an infinite series starting from 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1. Some versions have n plus 1, it doesn't matter times x to the n over n. If you need to review your power series, I have a great video. I'll link it in the description. Power series made easy. Okay, so what I'm going to do is replace natural log of 1 plus x in my integral with its power series representation. And that's valid. Notice we're on the interval from 0 to 1. So this power series representation holds. So we have integral 0 to 1, the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1, x to the n over n, and then this is all over x, yes? dx. Okay, no panic attacks, no meltdowns, just focus on the fact that we're integrating with respect to x. I have x to the n here and x in the denominator. I'm just going to use my laws of exponents and simplify. We're just going to clean up. Everything else, just treat it like a constant. It's not bothering us. So we have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity. This isn't changing, negative 1 to the n minus 1. Now I'm going to have x to the n minus 1. And then this over n just will stay here, dx. All right, now we basically could expand this power series, list out each term by term, and then anti-differentiate and figure out a pattern. But we don't need to do that. So to clean things up a wee bit, just so you're focusing on x, x. I can take the coefficients out. I can take the sum, n equals 1 to infinity out, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n, and then we just have here integral 0 to 1, x to the n minus 1 dx. Hopefully you feel more relaxed. So now let's think, how would we integrate? We're going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by the new exponent. So we have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n times, add 1, now I have x to the n over n. And this will get evaluated from 0 to 1. Now all of this, all of these involve n's, so they're just constants. I'm plugging in my limits of integration for the variable of the integral, which was x. So just rewrite everything else. We have the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over, let me combine those, make it n squared, and then I'll have 1 to the n minus 0 to the n. So this is just going to be 1 minus 0, which is 1. And so I'm left with the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n minus 1 over n squared. And that's the result from our integral. But can we do better? Can we figure out what exactly the sum of this series is and not just represent it as an infinite series? Well, I'm going to use the fact that we know that the sum, n equals 1 to infinity, of 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared over 6. That can be shown several ways, Fourier series, complex analysis, etc. We're just going to take this as fact for today. If you'd like to see why in a future video, comment down below. And we're going to call this s. Okay, so the sum of the infinite p series from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared is equal to pi squared over 6. Now let's expand the terms of this series so we can really see and compare it with what we have as the result from our integral. So the sum, n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Let me list out the first few terms. We have 1 plus a fourth plus a ninth plus 1 sixteenth, etc., etc., right? And I'm going to break this down into two sets. 
I want you to first consider what the sum of the even terms are. Now, the even terms are all of the terms that come from a sub 2n, right? So the sum of the even terms would be the sum n equals 1 to infinity, 1 over a sub 2n would be 2n quantity squared. And if we simplify this a bit, this is the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over 4n squared, which is 1 fourth times the sum n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. Now we already know, we're just gonna take it as fact that this sum, n equals one to infinity of one over n squared is pi squared over six. So therefore the sum of the even terms would be one fourth of that, which is gonna give me pi squared over 24. So that's the sum of the even terms, save that. Now, the sum of the even terms plus the sum of the odd terms gives us the entire sum of the series. So the sum of the odd terms would be the entire sum of the series minus the sum of the even terms. Good? And we know the sum of this p-series is pi squared over 6 minus the sum of the even terms we just found to be pi squared over 24. We're going to save this also. So that's the sum of the odd terms. Now, let's compare these results with our series that we got as the result of the integral. So our series, our answer was the sum, n equals one to infinity, negative one to the n minus one over n squared. Let's list out the first few terms. If n is equal to one, we'll have one as the first term. If n equals two, negative one fourth, n equals three, positive one ninth, n equals four, negative one sixteenth, so on and so forth. What do you notice is going on? Well, if I compare with the terms from the p-series, we basically have all of the odd terms as positive, and then all of the even terms as negative. So we have the odd terms from p-series, and uh, p equals two minus all of the even terms. And we just said the sum of the odd terms from the p-series one over n squared was pi squared over six minus pi squared over 24. And then the sum of the even terms is, we have it right there, pi squared over 24. So then we can simplify further. This is pi squared over six minus two pi squared over 24, which is pi squared over 12. And finally, at long last, the sum of our series is pi squared over 12. Voila, let's box that with pride. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's integral of the day. I know it was a little bit more challenging than some of the typical ones that come out. And if you'd like to check out my colleague, Dr. Gupta's Calculus 1 and Calculus 2 textbooks, they're fantastic. I'll link them in the description below. Don't forget to comment down below. Were you able to get this integral? Did you do it differently? And have you seen before that the sum of the p-series n equals one to infinity of one over n squared is pi squared over six? I remember doing it in grad school in my complex analysis course. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye, guys.